If we could start with the uh, Q2 loss, you saw that narrow. I want to just get an update on your path to profitability and what is the outlook for the company. Okay, so first of all, I think uh, our path to profit profitability is quite clear. I want to share you with a little bit numbers first, okay. We reported uh, 17.8 million revenue, uh, year over year revenue growth of 60.8% increase. And we also have a profit growth of 40.6% in the second quarter of 2025. And in terms of the major revenue, uh, our robo taxi revenue grows with astonishing number 836.7% year to year. So these are all very surprising good numbers. And also we have a very relatively low expense. Our net, our adjusted net loss for the second quarter of 2025 is kind of relatively low. And so for the past to the gross profit, profitability, it's always like this, okay? We focus on developing the best technology for autonomous driving and keep on doing international expense. So far, we ride is the only company in this world have six pro, autonomous driving products with a driverless permit in six countries. So we will keep our competitive, uh, 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 competitive edge and uh, our we, we have big market potential, and uh, I think uh, in the next few years, we will achieve the profitability. And you mentioned the autonomous driving permits across six countries. What new markets will you be tapping, and how do you go about choosing those markets? Okay, very good question. So uh, we are aiming at uh, growing in mid East market, and also team up with Uber. We plan to expand like 15 cities uh, including Europe and uh, Southeast Asia and Japan. And for picking up the potential market, we are here to fill out the gap between the shortage of drivers and the increasing demand for the drivers. Uh, we want to fill the gap. Therefore, any potential markets with aging problem or with short of bus driver or taxi driver problem and uh, with a good unique e economy is our potential market. Do you need the partnership with Uber in order to enter new markets? Uh, you know, that's a very good question. Uh, we actually team up with Uber to enter, enter new market. It depends on which region you are trying to eat, enter, right? For example, for Southeast Asia, uh, we, we have some uh, partners that, uh, that also equally important with Uber, but Uber is definitely a global uh, partner and uh, we are very honored and we are very glad to team up with Uber for potentially Middle East and European market. So I think it's a market driven approach. Which market is the most mature when it comes to L4 autonomy? Oh, the market mature, there are several of them are quite mature. Uh, the, the most is actually related to the regulatory uh, the, uh, regulatory policy and uh, it's actually dynamic. Uh, you know, uh, whether it's kind of uh, mature depends on several factors. That is the public acceptance, regulatory, uh, regulatory policy, and also the unit model. So these are complicated factors and also dynamic. Um, so one thing, several market I want to point out, Mid-East market is a very promising market. A Japan market is great. And the Southeast, including Singapore, and uh, I'm, I'm very glad to be selected as one member of uh, Autonomous Driving Steering Committee from Singapore. And uh, Singapore is a great market. Uh, European is potentially a very huge market. China is a great market. I think they are all very promising. When you mention China, there is uh, this policy of anti-involution on the EV market. Uh, the impact from the EV price war, uh, does it impact WeRide at all? I think, you know, uh, EV is related, but uh, the, the, the key drive for AV is different from uh, EV, okay? Uh, the AV is actually uh, autonomous driving is because of we are short of uh, uh, bus drivers or taxi drivers or robo sweeper drivers or sweeper drivers. Therefore, uh, AV is used to fill up the shortage of human labor. Uh, for EV, it's actually EV is mainly com compete against combustion engine and you know cost and in the environment considering the cost and environment issues. So the, in that part, I think they are in two different uh, categories. And uh, my personal view is AV is a bigger revolution. Okay, so AV, I'm so excited with the coming age of autonomous driving. Actually, it's already there, right? So 
I think uh, in 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 a in a in a big uh, in a big scope of uh, 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 AGI, I think AV is part of the big, very grand, very exciting revolution. So uh, we are working hard to push forward for the AV. And recently, we just released our newest developed uh, uh, HPC platform based on NVIDIA SOAR platform. This is the first auto grade. Uh, uh, computing platform for large-scale deployment with a computational uh, um, power of 2,000 tops. I'm very excited about rewrites uh, pro breakthrough in this part. So uh, I think totally uh, AV is a, a much, much bigger uh, leap forward, and uh, the, the, the logic behind it is different from, from, a, from EV, and uh, there are only very few companies in this world are capable of deploying AVs in the products. We write is definitely one of them. Now, you're the world's first mass-produced L4 autonomous vehicle that runs on the HPC 3.0 platform powered by NVIDIA's Drive AGX. Uh, we've heard NVIDIA being in the news. It was asked by Chinese officials about any backdoor security issues. I want to ask about the impact on chips and export controls from the United States. Is there any impact at WeRide? Okay, so first of all, we have very good relationship with NVIDIA, and NVIDIA is WeRide's early investor. Back in the year of 2017, they have already uh, invested us due to uh, the, the, the advanced technology of WeRide. And for in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the export control of the chipset, as, as, as you know, we are doing AVs in different markets and different regions. Number one, we need to really uh, follow our policy compliance. We want to make sure we respect the local laws. At the same time, we also uh, respect data sovereignty a lot. So we want to make sure we keep the data privacy, respect data sovereignty. And we, for different markets, we have different uh, uh, policy to pick up chips. So first of all, number one rule is it has to be accepted by the local uh, government and by the local society. With that in consideration, we also considering whether that chipset has a uh, fit our needs, that is efficiency and the cost effectiveness. These are all factors considered. So uh, besides, AV is a much bigger concept. It's used, uh, uh, AV use computational chips, but at the same time using LiDAR, using camera, using vehicles, the bunch of hardware factors we need to consider in, in a holo holistic view. So they are just part of it. That definitely everything we have to consider. Tony, I'm seeing a report about the company filing for a confidential listing in Hong Kong. Uh, I'm not sure what you can say to that, uh, whether if you can confirm it or not, but I'd like to know, would we ride be interested in a Hong Kong listing? So there's nothing I can disclose at this moment. We will let you know at the earliest possible uh, time, and, but we still want to emphasize we write as a first robot taxi and autonomous driving company uh, listed in Nasdaq. We always work hard to generate the best result, uh, best results, best products, best service, and also uh, seeking for all possible uh, all possible uh, capital opportunities.